know, as black women, brown girls who led traditionally or formerly white led organizations, yeah. um, it is a very unique uh, space to be sitting in. And, yeah. um, you know, I think that, you know, the work that we are doing is, you know, we, we've established a federation wide commitment to addressing um, racial equity in our own ranks. Um, and, you know, part of that has been our, um, we've start, we're starting with a benchmarking survey around belonging and equity to make sure that we understand what we're actually solving for, right? There, there are, um, you know, we, we have a lot of really um, important um, information from our staff, from our patients that are telling us where, where we are getting it wrong. And um, we need to we need to get get under under our um, the really important stories that we know are real, you know, and we know are are true because we've lived them and experiences them, them ourselves. We need to understand kind of um, deeper how to um, how to connect dots and, and and what are the right interventions for us? What 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 are the gaps in what our knowledge is? How are we growing leaders? How are we um, you know ensuring that we are um, you know reducing our own blind spots and our racial anxiety? All of the things that we should just be doing from a technical standpoint. Point. But really, it's a it's a cultural shift, right? For me, it's about bringing bringing equity and the work that we're doing in equity as a um, as a broad framework into the office of the president, so that every decision that radiates out from from my office into all of my leadership team has to you know has to match up to that equity framework and help us understand you know like where are the trade offs as we build you know different different work and and making yeah. sure that we're making those right choices and then of course it's accountability right it's like making sure that um, you know we are we're also measuring ourselves which is why I started with the benchmark because I think that actually helps us you know build out the right set of metrics to understand what the underlying drivers are. Um, around the inequity that we're seeing right now. The notion of um, having a very strong um, outside game to complement the very strong inside leadership, I think first and foremost is, is, is something really that we should, we should highlight. The, the work that Planned Parenthood has done um, in concert with 90 organizations in the reproductive health rights and justice field to come together around a blueprint agenda so that we would be ready on day one, as long as they were ready on day one, I think is really, um, is really important. And, you know, the, your point about the last four years having been so horrible, including the, the, the last week, uh, last couple of weeks on the, the Supreme Court, um, you know, ruling on, on REMS is that, you know, we do have to undo the harm from the last four years. Like that, that is a lot of work. Um, but what the Biden-Harris administration has shown us throughout their um, campaigning and conversation is that uh, they are willing to move, right? They're willing to learn and move and understand how these policies actually impact uh, real people and, you know, um, and, and, and connect the dots to the lived experience. And so, you know, on day, day one, we're looking for a, a robust and comprehensive executive order, right? Or, you know, we're, we're looking to make sure that this administration's commitment to sexual and reproductive health care um, is demonstrated by eliminating the global gag rule, right? We should not be telling other countries, you know, um, who, who who need yep. <laughs> um, aid, you know, what their policy should be around, um, around abortion. We want to start the process of rolling back uh, the harmful policies like um, the, the Title 10 domestic gag rule, right? We need to make it easier to um, expand access to family planning. And I think we have an opportunity not only to restore Title 10, but also build it back better, <laughs> modernize it um, in all of the ways in which um, you know, the Biden-Harris um, administration is, um, is thinking. And, you know, we do need to ask the incoming administration, the current administration to, um, you know, to, to keep medication abortion easier to access, particularly during the pandemic and to reduce those restrictions.